Hi. Uh, so, this is week 12 of the course uh, soil and water conservation engineering. So, in this course, uh, what we are going to uh, learn is the first the land capability classification and then uh, uh, sedimentation, sediment transportation, uh, erosion and then uh, I mean transportation mechanism. So, all these things and, and uh, how to measure sedimentation and how to measure erosion um, in the sample collection. So, different ways of uh, collecting sediment samples uh, I mean at different depths. So, all these things we are going to discuss in, in week number 12. So, so here the lecture number 1 uh, specifically for land capability classification and the lecture number 2 will be uh, focusing on improving uh, how to improve the land capa I mean capability uh, especially if you are talking about land capability. So, that means we are talking about how it can be used efficiently for uh, crop production. So, then the lecture number 3 uh, we are going to talk about the sediment and its uh, transportation and lecture number 4 will be sediment sampling, uh, 5 uh, measurement of suspended uh, sediment. So, the first one is the land capability classification. So, as I said uh, our intention of uh, using the term capability. So, uh, definitely that refers to the uh, production uh, crop production. So, how well uh, we can use the land for uh, pro producing you know the crop ok. And then here ok. So, here so, basically what is land capability? So, it is a system of grouping soils. So, basically it is a system of grouping soils ok. So, primarily on the basis of their capability to produce you know the uh, common cultivated crops and uh, pasture plants uh, without de deteriorating the cover uh, over a long period of time. So, this is uh, basically the what the land capability classification means. So, so, basically what we do, so we are going to classify the the lands based on uh, whether we will be able to uh, you know pro, uh, use the land for crop production or not or degree of wellness you can say. So, and uh, so both ba basically the common cultivated crops ok and also the pasture land uh, when we are talking about you know uh, the uh, the fodder crops and all other things. And the land capability classification is uh, subdivided into uh, you know capability class and capability subclasses. So, we are going to see how uh, we can divide these classification uh, divide these capabilities into uh, uh, main classes and subclasses ok. So, if you see uh, basically the overall you know or uh, land divisions if you see. So, the in 1950 uh, and 51, so the overall the, the whole the lands available in the uh, world has been classified like a forest about 14 percent is a forest and fallow 10 percent and the grass crops area is 42 percent and uh, and the land which is not available cultific, uh, for cultivation uh, cultivation is uh, 34 percent ok. So, the mostly here the the grass crop area the 42 percent uh, uh, will be used for cultivation and then in uh, 2010 and 11 the scenario is much improved if you compare the not available for cultivation. So, this is 34 percent where it is now it is 23 percent. So, it is reduced that means, some uh, not available for cultivation land is being used for you know uh, you know afforestation and then some fallow land also used for used uh, in case of forest as well as you know uh, the crop areas so that is 46 percent. So, 42 to 46 percent ok. So, uh, mostly the the crop land uh, we call it arable land and non crop land is non arable land ok. So, let us see the classification now. Um, ok. So, land capability classification. So, it is basically uh, in two groups. So, that is arable land and then non arable land. So, that means, the land used for cultivation and land used for 
uh, non cultivation crops like uh, you know the perennial forest crops something like that. Arable class uh, land class are class 1, class 2, class 3 and class 4. So, there are total 8 classes. So, these are 4 classes here right and then 4 classes here. So, these non arable land classes are classified as class 5, 6, 7 and 8. Okay. So, 5 and 6 are uh, used for perennial forest crops that is non arable land, but uh, so these classes of lands are being used for perennial forest crops. And then, so let us discuss one by one uh, the land classification or lands. So the first one is arable land the or the broader you know classification under that class 1. So, the class 1 as I said this is a very good land, it is a very fertile land right and the slope is almost it is like a flat slope 0 to 1 percent if you see here. So, this is a, a class 1 here. So, so mostly this is the green color. So, dark green color, color. so that represents uh, you know the class 1. So, it is a uh, I mean a relatively flat and has deep soil. So, deep root zone uh, it has and good internal and good uh, surface drainages. So, uh, the amount of water you, you just uh, put on top. So, that drains very well okay. so, and that will be useful for the crop production. Okay. And then the land can be cropped every year without uh, special practices to control erosion. So, you do not need to uh, use any engineering practices for uh, you know controlling erosion in, in this kind of lands. And this is best suitable for all agricultural crops. So, since it is on a fertile land and a flat land, so a well drained land. So, this can be used for you know most of the crops uh, to be grown. Uh, and also deep soil depth definitely that will help uh, in protecting the fertile land. And, and, and also you know uh, the crops which are in deep root uh, they will be uh, getting the you know fertilize uh, getting the nutrients from the deeper zones. And uh, this is not affected by any appreciable erosion, uh, wetness and salinity. So, so this is uh, uh, this kind of lands are not uh, you know uh, affected with salinity and drainage I mean uh, water logging conditions. So, this is uh, class 1 is the good uh, I mean very fertile land for crop production. Okay. And then the next class class 2 is uh, this is called a good land that is very good land and now it is class 2 is a good land. So, and the slope of the land varies between 1 to 3 percent. So, the class 2 land you can see here. Okay. And it requires moderate attention to uh, conservation practices. So, since it has a slope, there is a possibility that uh, the soil may you know uh, run off from the field. So, you need uh, at least uh, some attention to control erosion and generally the contour plowing and other easy to use practices uh, will be used uh, to reduce or control the erosion. And it has uh, a moderate soil depth. Uh, and the light or heavy texture, uh, gentle slope, uh, moderate soil fertility. Okay. And this is basically these lands are basically suitable for uh, permanent cultivation with some soil and water conservation practices since it is a slope, it has some slope. So, you need to uh, I mean practice some conservation practices to control erosion in class 2. Okay. So, then uh, class 3 uh, under arable land. So, this is moderately good uh, land, the slope uh, will go between 3 to 5 percent. If you see here, so the class 3, so land is here okay, and it has 3 to 5 percent uh, slope and mostly is found on gentle sloping hills. right? So, the mostly uh, this can be seen on it is not uh, you know uh, steep slope hills, it is a gentle slope hills. And the crops must be more carefully uh, selected. So, the plant cover should be maintained. So, if you do not maintain the plant cover because it is slopey, so what happens there is a chance of you know uh, a soil uh, erode uh, from the fields. So, an increased attention must be given to conservation practices because of the slope and mostly the terraces and strip cropping and contour bonding and graded bonding will be practiced to control erosion. 
and it can be productive uh, with proper management uh, by a producer. So, uh, it will be if the producer has uh, you know properly uh, using the conservation practices on this kind of lands and uh, even this I mean this could be a good arable land. Okay. And then the next class 4 of uh, this is the last class of this arable land. So, there is a class number 4. So, in this class so the mostly this is a fairly a good land and slope varies from 5 to 10 percent. So, hilly lands mostly these lands are located on hills and lowest performance uh, for cultivated uh, cultivation and uh, uh, requires special conservation management practices since it is uh, lying on, on hills and frequently is subjected to erosion. So, gullies can be formed or gullies can be seen in these lands very easily because. So, if you see the class 4, the class 4 is here. So, the mostly you know this is a hilly areas okay. and this is suitable only for occasional or limited cultivation. Okay. So, sometimes uh, I mean if you see the hilly areas, so there you know, often you can see some cultivation be going on because of the you know some moderate slopes or fairly good slopes and uh, definitely engineering measures are recommended here to control erosion. And then, so the next is uh, non arable land. So, other class, uh, I mean, other group, you can so, so the class 5. So, the class 5, this is unsuitable suitable for cultivation. So, as I said, this is uh, non arable land. So, definitely the slope uh, will be, you know, varying from 15 to 25 percent. So, class 5 can be seen uh, here, right. So, so these uh, classes or uh, this is unsuitable for cultiv cultivation and used for pasture crops the mostly they are either, uh, for cattle grazing you know hay crops or you know uh, tree farming all those things uh, uh, will be done on these lands. And this is often used for wildlife and recreational areas. So, since so this is uh, you know less important for cultivation. So, those lands are being used for grazing you know cattle or you can establish or recreational purposes like, like wildlife uh, recreation area. So, the soil typically has good tilth and fertility. Uh, the soil has good tilth uh, and also the fertility, but the thing is uh, since it is a slopey area. So, the cultivation crops uh, because requires a lot of you know farming operations. So, that may lead to uh, losing the soils and definitely uh, that will increase the aero soil erosion. So, so that is why and then have the potential to become class 1 uh, since it is a fertile and uh, you know land uh, it can be class 1, but due to a particular problem uh, like hazard they cannot be fulfilled the characteristics of class 1 because of the slope right. So, and, and also the shallow depths ok. So, uh, shallow uh, depths so definitely though the land top surface is fertile uh, this, this, this is not suitable for growing. Uh, you know the uh, regular cultivation crops. So, then class 6, so the class 6 uh, is uh, definitely not suitable for row crops and slope can vary from 25 to 33 percent. So, the class 6 uh, land is located here. So, so mostly this is suitable for horticulture crops like mango, coffee and guava, uh, cashew nut etcetera. So, mostly the horticulture crops can be grown in this. Uh, the grazing uh, should be regulated, uh, preserve the plant cover. So, plant cover needs to be uh, uh, I, I mean preserved, uh, otherwise if you allow you know free grazing what happens the top surface will be open and that uh, because of the high slope uh, definitely that leads to erosion. So, the soil may have a fair productivity if it has not been damaged by erosion. So, just like in class uh, uh, you know 5. So, the class 6 also is a very good fertile land, but because of the shallow depth and uh, so and, and also the steep slope uh, that definitely a uh, I mean it is not suitable for uh, uh, you know regular crop cultivation. So, the gullies often quickly form if not carefully managed. So, the slopes here the steep slopes can definitely uh, result uh, in uh, forming gullies very easily. And then the next class is the class number uh, 7. 
So, here the class number 7 has slope between 33 to 50 percent. So, the class number 7 uh, is located here if you see and highly unsuitable for cultivation uh, because the steep slope and best uses are uh, permanent pasture or forestry and wildlife. So, so, the most of the land is being used for uh, forestry, wildlife, li wildlife uh, and recreational purposes and uh, generally lands are uh, droughtly and swampy having very deep slope, uh, rough uh, stony or very severely eroded or infested with gullies. So, this is kind of these lands are uh, rough and you can see lot of undulations and lot of you know depressions, lot of gullies, um, but can be used for you know pasture and forestry and wildlife uh, and, and also this is uh, uh, like generally seen in you know dry lands. So, the other category is uh, class number 8, this is the last class of the land uh, capability classification and the slopes are more than 50 percent. So, this is definitely unsuitable for uh, plant production. So, this is uh, uh, class number 8 here and the soil may be uh, wet and high in sand or clay uh, often used for you know waterfowl habitat. So, the most waterfowl hab habitats those are the birds and uh, uh, I mean uh, in this. So, I mean since it is a wet and the, uh, the soil type is a clay soils. So, the water can be retained in you know small ponds and then uh, the waterfowl habitat can be uh, maintained there. So, very rough and not suitable for uh, woodland or grazing. So, this, uh, this particular lands uh, because the steep is slope. So, this cannot be used suitable for uh, woodland or grazing sites. So, it is only uh, like a, like a, a rough land uh, with, with some you know water uh, I, I mean uh, water storages and that can be used for waterfall habitats. Okay, land capability classification classes. So, these uh, we can also use some colors here. So, the deep green and the look at this the green color is being uh, changing from deep to light and yellow and then uh, this is uh, I mean yellow also uh, and the red and then finally, you get the pink color. So, the arable lands here. So, the mostly the green color. So, because uh, you can you know grow cultivation, uh, you can start uh, using it for cultivation purposes. So, in the class 1 here have no significant limitations in using for uh, cultivation. So, this is a good fertile land and I mean uh, flat, relatively flat slopes and um, uh, deep soil depths. Uh, so, definitely no significant limitations for crop growth. So, this is very good uh, and then and followed by so the limitations will increase uh, if you go down from class 1 to you know class 8 uh, this is moderate limitations uh, restrict the range of crops or require moderate conservation practices so the conservation practices will will increase when you go down from class 1 to uh, class 7 uh, class 8 and this is uh, um, like uh, non arable land will start from class 5 to class 8 and definitely class 8 is uh, unsuitable for plant production. So, uh, if you go from you know the top to bottom, so the uh, limitations will increase. So, definitely uh, in order to you know improve uh, the land for cultivation in especially in case of arable land, you may have to use uh, engineering and you know, soil conservation uh, measures. Okay. And then so, the next is again the suitability of different land capability classes for land uses. So, if you see the land capability classes here uh, 1 to uh, 8 and very intense cultivation. So, this only class 1 is for very intense cultivation here and other classes are not supporting for very uh, intense cultivation. And the second is intense cultivations only 1 and uh, 2 classes are used for intense cultivation and moderate cultivation you can go you can also uh, the third class also supports and limited cultivation up to four classes and intense grazing. So, up to you know five classes 
a moderate grazing. So, grazing will start here from you know class number 5 to because these are all you know non arable lands and moderate grazing uh, you can go up to 6th class limited grazing uh, you know class 7 and forestry class 8 and wildlife also supports uh, almost all classes wildlife. Okay. So, this way you can interpret this uh, table and then uh, uh, and then the next is okay, land classes these are also based on uh, soil texture. So, soil classes textural classes like sandy uh, loamy sand, sandy loam. So, symbol generally for sandy you will use small s uh, loamy sand small l s and sandy loam s l and land capability class. Uh, so, this is uh, you know fourth class sandy soils are fourth class and then uh, second class uh, loamy sand and first class look at this from here to here. So, the mostly the first class are uh, from sandy loam to clay loam. So, these are all uh, very good for cultivation okay. and similarly sandy clay this is the second grade and silty clay second and clay third grade. Okay. So, this way based on the soil texture you can also put the different soil soils a, uh, into land capability classification. Similarly, in the next uh, table if you see land classes based on the soil depth. So, see the soil depths here. So, this is this deep uh, you know deep soil depth or, or deep depth you can say. So, D 5 we will put the D 5, but class 1 uh, supports D 5 because the soil uh, this, this is the deeper uh, depths compared to the fifth class which has you know less than 7.5 centimeter. So, that is that is the soil depth which uh, land capability classification of uh, class 5 supports this and we will use the these symbols. So, that definitely represents the uh, different soil depths. So, the next is uh, land cl uh, classification based on uh, land slope. So, here the symbols we use A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, G, H, I these are all capital symbols and then land slopes 0 to 1 percent the class 1 because you can see the, the flatness will increase or, or sorry the flatness or the slope will increase from class 1 to class, class 8 and the slopes are here the mentioned here. So, but different slopes we already mentioned in the previous uh, in a discussion, uh, but only thing for different slopes we will give a uh, uh, symbol along with the class. So, I A will give class 1 and then land slope is 0 1 okay, uh, 0 to 1. So, similarly identification of classes based on erosion status. So, here erosion status E 1 to E 4. So, E 1 represents a negligible erosion where up to 25 percent is of a horizon lost okay, or it is a negligible erosion or 25 percent. So, class 1 and class 2 uh, can be uh, I mean represented and then E 4 which is very severe erosion about 25 percent to 75 percent of B horizon uh, lost may include narrow and deep gullies. So, this is the you know the last class uh, 6 and uh, 7 classes are supporting this uh, classification. So, in addition to that uh, we also have subclasses. So, the subclasses basically the capability subclasses is the second category in the land capability classification system and basically represent the soils physical chemical and atmospheric limitation due to which uh, the land use is further restricted. So, the previously we, we are only looking for a restriction of crop uh, growth, but here the soil uh, you know quality soil physical and chemical also the atmospheric limitations if you include and you can also clearly so these things the limitations if you add that will be subclasses. So, C uh, this is adverse climate. So, denotes a significant adverse climate for crop production as median climate. So, if you if you put C as subclass this is a median and the D undesirable soil uh, structure or low permeability E for erosion right F for low fertility I for inundation. Uh, and M for moisture limitation. Similarly, so you can go through the description uh, of uh, individual you know subclasses and then um, 
if you see I mean it will continue. So, that like n for salinity and p for stoniness r for consolidated bedrock s root zone limitation t for topography and w excess water x for you know. So, this subclass is comprised of soil having limitation resulted from the cumulative effects of two or more of the adverse uh, characteristics. So, if you put like n and p like uh, salinity and uh, stoniness and you may have to put x. So, one or two uh, I mean combination of these two if you, you can represent it with x. Okay. And then so, the mapping unit is very important uh, in order to or represent a land capability classification. For example, this mapping unit the information is collected for land capability classification is recorded and map unit as. So, the mapping unit is represented as soil series minus texture of the soil minus effective soil depth divided by land uh, slope minus erosion hazard. So, how to get this uh, you know number? So, that uh, so for example, here is example there is a parameter on column number 1 for example, L for uh, so this is a small l, l for loam right and d 5 is equal soil depth. So, that represent uh, greater than 90 centimeter and capital A land slopes at 0 to 1 percent and E 1 erosion hazard and C climate limitations this is subclass. Okay. So, if this is the parameter right and land capability class this is all you are talking about class 1 and mapping unit can be estimated like 1 as uh, this is 1 because land cl uh, capability class. So, soil series this is 1 and uh, and then d 5 is the soil depth right. So, effective soil depth is uh, d 5 okay. and then a is land slope. So, this is a and e this is erosion hazard e 1 right this is erosion hazard e 1 okay. and then the land capability class with subclass l c. So, l is for loam and c is for climate uh, limitation. Okay. So, with this so uh, definitely we can represent the mapping unit uh, in this form and then the land capability you know class with subclass can be represented with L c L is for uh, loam and c is for climatic limitations. Okay. So, this way we can uh, represent the whole land uh, class I mean capability classification uh, in using a mapping unit. Okay. So, in this lecture uh, we started with you know uh, the broad classification of uh, lands. So, arable land and non arable land again arable land is being classified into four classes and then uh, non arable land is classified into uh, I mean continuously other four classes. So, so the class number 1 to 8 this is the, uh, the whole class that represents the land capability classification is the capability we are talking about whether the particular land is used for you know um, the cultivation or cultivating crops or not. And, and and also there are other classes based on you know you know the erosion I mean erosion the slope and then uh, uh, and then soil texture okay and soil depth so all different you know uh, uh, classes also we can get and then uh, not only that there is subclasses so based on the limitations uh, restrictions we can say based on the restrictions if you have restriction on uh, you know climatic condition restriction on soil physical and chemical properties. So, definitely you need to add uh, that uh, subclass. So, and finally, the whole land capability classification is represented with uh, a mapping unit. So, the mapping we have seen an example on how to represent uh, uh, the land capability classification using a mapping unit. Thank you.